Hello again. This is DDP with the Dallas Prospect back from a bit of an unexpected hiatus. I am well. I am fine. There is nothing to worry about there. Fortunately, things are actually going very well for the Dallas Prospects right now. I'll admit, coming into this offseason, I was filled with dread. I was very much in the impression that Kyrie Irving was not going to be staying in Dallas. Turns out he is. Three-year deal, $120, $23 million, something like that, guaranteed. There's a player option on year three, but honestly, you got a two-year window, really, with Luka anyway, so that fits. That makes sense to me. That's actually a good way to line those two up so that if it does fail, you're at least getting essentially the total freedom and flexibility because you're screwed at that point anyway if that does come to be. And you have incentives in there as well for if the team wins, for instance, 50-plus games, uh, postseason performance metrics, things like that. Um, but all of that is additional. The fact is, you landed that deal. And yeah, there was talk that like, oh, okay, he's looking at taking a deal, or not a deal, taking a meeting with Phoenix right when free agency opens. All the national media wants to talk about him and LA, him and LeBron reuniting and all of that. Nobody really gave Dallas a shot. And so for them to immediately wrap up their business this way, that's the sort of thing you brought in Nico Harrison for, was managing those relationships. Because if you look uh, across the league, you see guys like James Harden, who have now bounced around several times now. And the problem there always seems to be the relationship thing. Even with Daryl Morey, you know, who, who brought him in with Houston and everything, not able to to reconcile that so now that's falling out in uh philadelphia this is why you have nico so this was your single biggest free agent signing in terms of the caliber of player your single biggest free agent signing in franchise history i don't think there's even a debate there this this guy talent wise is it the question then comes how do you continue to build around that? There's a lot you have to do. There's a lot of pieces you need if your goal and expectation is to compete moving forward in this Western Conference. And you know what? Say what you will. The, the two games Dallas basically tanked at the end of the year paid off because even before the Kyrie signing, you had yourself a good draft. Uh, lively, like a lot. Now that we've seen a little bit of summer league from him, his... his Length, a legitimate seven footer with a seven seven wingspan. The the defensive presence and energy, very much. Don't get me don't get me too excited, but very much, uh, you know, energy and uh, all that of a Tyson Chandler starter kit, which is appropriate because Tyson is mentoring him now. So I love that. I love what we're seeing in that sample there. His vocal presence and everything on the defensive end in his first summer league action, limited as it might have been, uh, was very, very great to see. And I love the Prosper pick as well. Uh, that's another great pickup. So I, I actually love what Dallas did in the draft. Two very good picks. And the fact that you were able to get Lively despite trading back from 10, still get him at 12, and then turn that into what you did. The last two years... I know Christian Wood did not work out in Dallas, but the last two years, what you have been able to do around the draft and how you've managed some of these trades and assets, fantastic work. That is one very welcome uh, change that I've seen with this new quote unquote regime, even though it's still Mark Cuban in a prominent position there, um, you know, ultimately deciding what they do. But I love how they're managing that the last two years around the draft. So that's all great. I love the picks. You get Kyrie. Good starting point here. Then things get a little bit interesting because Dallas goes a little bit quiet. We're trying to figure out, like, okay, how are things going to pan out? Of course, there are names that are very interesting. Those just aren't quite materializing, and we're thinking, like, ah, okay, that's very Dallas of us. Our, our history shows that's what always seems to come about. Other moves here, and I'm not running this chronologically. I'm just giving you this rundown here. Uh, you make a move to bring back in another trade, not bring back, excuse me, but you make another trade to bring in Rashawn Holmes, who shout out to my dude, Annie and Duca has been, he has been on that train for years, wanting Holmes in Dallas. And now you've got it. And I think Holmes can work great here. I really do. And it took Dallas a while to actually announce that move officially. Uh, that was paired with the, um, 
the Prosper pick, I believe. It took a while for that to actually be called out. But I think that's just because they were still trying to kick the tire on some other trades. We've seen other talks and things. And so I think they were holding off on announcing it officially uh, via social media until they knew for sure, like, okay, there's not anything developing there. He's here. He's a Maverick. So Rashawn Holmes, that's a great upgrade for the front court. I like that. I think he's going to have a very good thing here. Better than he's been the last couple of years. I just don't think he's been in the right situation um, to, to really have his chance to shine. I think he will do well here. You also bring back, yet again, maybe the third time is the charm. I don't know, but you got Seth Curry back. Look, I like Seth Curry, man. Um, his first swim through with Dallas, I was convinced he was a dude that you needed to not build around him, but having like your core sort of foundation. And they weren't able to do that. Then they got him on that ridiculously good deal. And then they made the very head-scratching move that they made to trade him to Philadelphia uh, for the Richardson trade. And oof, that that's one that on paper you kind of understood, but man, that one hurt and that one set you back. You got him back again, though. It's not the same value he was, but it's still a guy who is a very capable three-point shooter who has had success here twice. So, okay, I like that. For a shooter off the bench, I like that. We know the defensive deficiencies but whatever. Then another move that some people are a little bit head scratching about. You got a number, uh, a former number five overall pick Dante Exum. He tried here before and it didn't work out. He's been playing elsewhere and he's been shown out in other leagues. That's great. I still have reservations. It is a little bit interesting. Um, the joke I saw people kind of making was that it was sort of like getting a Nilakina uh, replacement kit or whatever when it's like Nilakina is not even really something that needs a replacement kit. Like he just doesn't fit enough into what you're doing anyway, that it's not like you should have looked at that and said, well, we got to replace that kind of player or that kind of role it is what it is for a low contract thing. It, okay, fine. It, it's not the sexiest move. It's not even the one that I really wanted them to do. I feel like we've tried this before, but maybe this time around, who knows? Then, um, then Dallas gets, Interesting. The most aggressive thing that we see them doing is they get in on a three team trade with Boston and San Antonio to bring in Grant Williams to Dallas in exchange for Reggie Bullock and an unprotected pick. Now that pick swap is in 2030. So it's a ways out there, but the fact that you turned Reggie Bullock, no disrespect to Reggie, I think he's better than what we got to see from him last year. And he was huge in that Western conference finals run, but to turn him at this stage of his career into Grant Williams, a much younger player who fills a major need for you is huge. Dallas in the midst of all of that is also able to sign an extension on a four year, $53 million sign and trade with Williams. That that is Phenomenal value, phenomenal value um, for, for what he brings to the table, the defensive presence. You know, he is a capable three point shooter. He's, he's not going to be um, this this world beater for you or anything like that. But that is a very good pickup for a major, major uh, upgrade that you needed on the defensive end. You were 25th in defense last year. Couldn't rebound to save your life. Now, he's not a rebounder, to be clear. but it's things like that that are going to help you turn your team around with some time and build a right proper core for, for comparison's sake, for the type of defender and everything, I would say that he could, um, you know, f from a reputational standpoint that he could kind of be, I mean, look what Dylan Brooks was able to get from Houston. I think he ended up getting like 80 or 90 million from Houston on a four year deal. So that's insanity. Uh, but the fact that you're able to get, this guy, Williams, for $53 million. Okay, I like that. And he is legitimately pumped about being here, immediately changed his bio to, you know, calling himself a forward from the Dallas Mavericks and everything. He's excited. Uh, elsewhere in that trade, the Celtics got multiple second-round picks. And I, I'm not really concerned with what the Spurs got, but this is, uh, this is good here, and I like this tweet as well from Kevin O'Connor. He says, uh, love this for the Mavericks. 
They've had a really good offseason. Lively, prosper in the draft. Curry, Williams, exhumed through signings and tradings. Now, there is another thing here that I'm going to get into. I haven't mentioned it yet just because now it, it doesn't matter. But uh, you did have a offer for restricted free agent um, from Portland, uh, Thibuli, and it just didn't didn't materialize. Dallas had him for like a three year, I want to say thirty three million dollar contract offer, and Portland immediately was like, "Yeah, we intend to match that." So a little bit of a downside there. I'm really curious to see what Dallas's sort of pivot is because you have to have something. I know some people were excited saying like, "Well, hey, PJ Williams. I know he's a Charlotte guy, but he's." He lives here in Dallas. His trainer is here in Dallas. Um, there's there's a lot of smoke out there and things like that. Like, yes, he would be phenomenal. And yes, he would be better uh, than what you would have been just missing out on. However, the price to get him is going to be much steeper. It's a it, You have to trade for him, for one. And you would also have to throw more money than you were at uh, Thibault. So... Not going to happen there. It's not the same price as Matias would have been. But it was a fascinating thing because these these overall moves fit well, I think, with what you need around Luca and Kyrie. So that was the whole reason that we were excited about this, that we looked at this and said, like, okay, they're making moves. Are they all splash or sexy moves? Not necessarily. But the fact that, you look at this, I think you've had nine players turn over from the roster from last year. Bertans is out in a trade. Bullock is out in a trade. Christian Woods just out. Uh, Theo Pinson is not being re-signed. Justin Holliday is, wasn't re-signed. Nail Aquina not re-signed. Markeith Morris not re-signed. Instead, you got Grant Williams, Seth Curry, Rashawn Holmes, Dante Exum, Derek Lively II, Omax Prosper, and uh, I'd even mention Mike Miles Jr. A lot of turnover for the roster I do see the identity shift that they're trying to make. The moves they're making address deficiencies on the roster and it's pieces that should fit well around Luca and Kyrie. That's all very good. Oh, and the other move that I know Maverick fans are uh, probably sick to their stomach about, but uh, Dwight Powell is back as well on a three-year deal. He actually turned down a much bigger deal from Houston to stay with Dallas make it that what you will. I'm not excited about it. I think it was like a three for 11. I'm not excited about it because honestly, the guy he's unplayable in the postseason. He can be Mr. Great teammate, great culture guy, Mr. Try hard, but we've had three different years of postseason runs, including one all the way to the West finals in which he has been shown again and again and again and again to be basically unplayable. I don't understand that and if you're in it from your mentorship perspective, if that's more so like Tyson Chandler, then what's what's the purpose of Dwight Powell here? If he's not the mentor for Lively, um, then what's the purpose? I, I don't understand that myself. But yes, Dwight Powell is back as well. So whatever he's got on Mark Cuban, it apparently sticks. Um. Yeah, the questions on Washington, like I said, you'd have to figure out what it would take to actually trade for him, then if Charlotte would even willingly do that. But it, it would have been a, f a phenomenal pickup here. Like I, I would say it would give your team a major shot in the arm where suddenly I'm not just thinking about returning to the playoffs. I'm thinking about like, okay, wh what are the odds that this team can make another run to like the West Finals? Because I really would like how things are building up at that point. Uh, da, 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 da. Other notes here. Yeah, here's another another note from uh, Landon Thomas. He does great work. Um, check out his stuff and support Mavs fans for life if you don't already. Uh, Mavericks now have six players on the main roster who are 25 or younger. Luca still 24, Grant Williams 24, Josh Green 22, Jaden Hardy 21, Omax Prosper 21 and Derek Lively the second 19. That is good because that's been one of the problems with this team is age in recent years. So having that option helps a lot. I mentioned earlier um 
Portland matching. The reason I feel like Dallas has to have a backup move, like a pivot that we just haven't seen. And I know there's been a number of talks that Dallas was involved in trying to make something else happen. And none of them apparently materialized. So that was always every year we would see this Dallas sitting on all these trade talks where things are just contingent on something coming out the right timing. And then it never does. And Dallas misses out on all the premier free agents. And it looked for a moment like that might be happening again this year. But fortunately, it didn't. Uh, I feel like they have to have a backup move here because everyone around the the Matias uh, Thibault situation in Portland basically said, like, regardless of what happens with Damian Lillard trying to force his way out, specifically force his way to Miami, nobody ever doubted that Portland intended to keep him. So with them being restricted free agent and your offer being three for 33, did you really think Portland wasn't going to match that? Odds are they were going to match that. So what, what is the purpose then? I, I kind of wonder about that. Um, but at this point, it, it doesn't matter. It's been several days now. So the fact that nothing else has come about makes me think that Dallas has either been continuing to have some sort of trade talks or trying to find something else. And uh, we just haven't been able to see it come about yet i still think dallas needs a, a real center here that it's still a painful gap on this team and i hate the term stop gap center but that's honestly pretty much where we are at this point um they've they've got to find something to plug up the middle of that defense and uh lively you know i love him as a pick i love the potential for what he could bring but you're not going to throw a rookie a 19 year old rookie into heavy minutes in that situation and expect to compete. You're just not. So I hope he's got a, a decent role within, um, you know, within the rotation, but I don't expect him to be in that situation, but I will be sick to my stomach. If starting night opening night, we have Dwight Powell out there starting at center. And I am almost resigned to the fact that's probably what's going to happen as sick as it will make me. Uh, let's see here. Here's a note on, uh, this is from Chris Mannix on Twitter. This is a note on Grant Williams. He struggled a little bit in the second half of the season last year for Boston, but before the All-Star break, he was shooting 41% from three in 58 games. And uh, that's that's pretty solid. Also, don't forget uh, in the 2022 finals, um, in the 2022, uh, sorry, 2022 finals run, um, if Williams doesn't make that seven threes in game seven against Milwaukee, Boston doesn't win uh, that series. So very, very compelling stuff there to, to remember when you put it into those perspectives. It's uh, impressive. So I like a lot of the moves Dallas is making. My question now is how they are going to build upon this because right now it feels like we've made good progress but I still feel like we are a move or two away, particularly the center. This team's biggest weaknesses were its defense overall, of course, and uh, it's rebounding. And we've gotten a little better on the rebounding front. Like I said, Williams isn't going to address that. It's a guy with sub five boards last year. But I do like some of the moves that we've made, uh, getting more athletic, getting guys that can rim run a little bit. But we need to see how Dallas is able to address this. This was another good note here um, from the Stein line, uh, Mark Stein's podcast. Uh, actually, it was Chris Haynes on his podcast with Mark Stein. He said that uh, Matias Thibu wanted, quote, desperately to come to Dallas. Not often that we hear that. Now, it's not like this is like a huge name or anything like that, but it's a guy that you wanted and who would have made your team better. So to hear that he wanted desperately to play with Luca and Kyrie I think that's very important um, just to kind of changing that narrative out there. And that's one of those things too, that say what you will about the problems of uh, the perceived problems of like a Kyrie Irving and all of that. The fact is if he's here and he's here in, in a longer term capacity as he is now, that is going to be a plus in your favor because guys around the league respect Kyrie Irving. They see what he can do. They want to play with him and uh, be a part of that. So the fact that you can pair him and Luca, and now you're actually starting to build a roster that complements their two skill sets 
and uh, you know the things that they need, that's all good. The question is, can you in basically two years build that roster reconstruction and make a run? Because that's what you have to do. If you're not back in these next two years in the Western Finals and looking like you're ready for a potentially next step after that, it's probably done. Like, you can't have like, oh, we got bounced in the second round in seven games and we're getting closer next year. Come on, guys, resign or stick with us. Kyrie, you opt into your last year. Luca, hang in there just a little longer. We'll we'll do it. It's I don't think it's that simple. I think I think the baseline now is because if we're talking two years from now and still not there, then we're talking three full seasons have passed since Dallas's run to the West Finals. You have to show progression. It doesn't matter what the turnover of the roster is. It doesn't matter that you've had a complete re not a complete rebuild, but you know what I mean. That you have basically torn it down to the studs, an appropriate term, I guess and then rebuilt around that, it doesn't matter. What matters is, are you at that next level or right stinking there? I don't, I don't know if they will be. I like what they're doing. I'm very interested in what they're doing. It actually gives me at least a little sense of hope that, okay, they know what they're doing now because a lot of years passed I saw the things that they were doing and uh, the rationalizations they made as they made head scratching trades. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, maybe I can, I can buy into that a little bit, but like Josh Richardson, um, oh man, what was, what was the other guy with Richardson? I just totally blanked his name. It was right there. And then I just lost it. Uh, James Johnson coming in and they're like, Oh man, we're here, we're here come those dogs. And it's just like, nah, man, nah, you're not, you're not. And, uh, we're actually going to get further away for a moment before we get closer. So I, I like the direction they're heading, but there's a lot of work left to do. It's not just finding a stopgap center. It's not just finding a new, you know, build around, as a foundational piece moving forward, a center. I think they have other needs as well. And, you know, the, the promise is that they've kept a lot of young players thus far. Josh Green, I think, has a very bright future. Do I see him being a star? No. But I see him being a hell of a 3 and D guy. I do. The flashes of athleticism are there. He looks like he is that dude they thought that complimentary piece they thought when they drafted him. And for that, I'm glad they've held on to him. Jaden Hardy, year two, looks like he's ready to take the world by storm. I think he's got potential star power in him. Uh, if nothing else, I think he's going to be one of those guys that can come in on a given night and just light your ass up. He might not do it every night, but I think he's going to be one of those instant offense guys you can bring in who at the very least makes you lethal offensively. And that's a great thing. Lively, good God, is it great to have a talented athletic big uh, who can man the defense, anchor things, and rack the rim a little bit. Rock the rim, rack the rim, I don't know. Great to have that piece again. And, uh, and Prosper is another great uh, addition there as well. So I like the young talent they're starting to assemble. Obviously, if Luca's been here five years, but it's like, damn, dude, he's still nine here. He's still 24 years old. So... You've got a lot of very young talent that is fascinating. The question is going to be, do they have the timeline they need to mature into what they need to be? And in the interim, can they find and trade for or sign the essential pieces they still need to build this thing up and take that next essential step? I don't know. But compared to where I was a month ago, I feel much, much better about the, the state of current day Mavericks and the future looking ahead. A month ago, I still was of the mind that this thing is about to burn to the ground. We are watching this slowly burn. 
and it sucks, but we have no one to blame. I say as a franchise, but ourselves for letting this happen. That is true. But at least now they seemingly have realized it, made a plan of attack, and now they're actively putting out that fire and are rebuilding in a smart way. Not just putting patches up like they're actually doing the work, renovating this shit and making it better. That is at the very least encouraging. I don't know if it'll be enough to get over the top. But the fact that you have as many young, nice pieces as you do now is at least an interesting, right? Like, I know people keep looking at like Oklahoma City and they're like, oh, look at all those those picks they have. Look at all those players. They can't do everything with everyone. Not You know, I, I understand that a lot of the guys Oklahoma City is amassing are never going to take that jump. But they have so many players at this point that are very interesting, very, uh, you know, high potential that it's like if even a quarter of them end up being what people thought they might be, that's going to be a very dangerous team. And they're still insanely young. You're not that. You're not that. But like the Paul George trade alone made that impossible for anyone else to be that basically. But at least over here, you've got four or five guys now that you're like, you know what? Either he's going to be a major foundational piece for us that we can be excited about for years, or he's going to be a hell of a trade chip if he's not in those plans for the future. But we need to do something else because you will have these guys who will have someone else kick the tires on them. Let's say two years from now, if it does not work out, if uh, if Luca is basically forcing his way out, if Kyrie is like not going to take that last player option year of his deal and he's gone. If, if you are tear it down to the studs and you're just like, oh, the London Bridge is burning. We can't do anything about it at this time. We have to go total rebuild. If you wanted to package one or two of those guys into a, into a move to try and get another very good player here to at least try and stay afloat, which seemingly is what Dallas always tries to do is at least stay afloat, not ever, ironically, tank. But at the very least... If you were to do something like that, you have guys that other teams would want to kick the tires on. Like, okay, well, he did this in Dallas, but we think if we got him here because of his ceiling and how young he still is, he could go up and be this next level of what we're looking for. That's what they're going to be thinking. So that's the the fascinating thing here. You have pieces that other teams are going to be interested in and whether they work out for you or whether they just tantalize another team to open the door for you to do something else or something greater the possibilities are there and we have not had a lot of those possibilities for a long time, but that's going to do it for my time. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I think on this, this iteration here of prospect comeback, uh, this is going to be a weekly podcast. I think might be a Sunday, might be a Monday, but it's going to be a once a week thing. I don't know how often I will be quote unquote live, but I will figure something out to try and drop in and talk Mavericks with you. I have missed this. I've not forgotten about (laughs) any of this. It's just a matter of uh, finding that balance in my life and uh, doing what's good for my mental health and everything as well. Trying to take care of myself so that I don't get burnt out and uh, in in such a negative headspace as, as I've struggled in the past with. So thank you for tuning in. If you want, like the video, share it, subscribe it, whatever works. Till next time, guys, remember every... Wow. It's been so long. I forgot my own tagline. Oh God, I'm any. All right. Every legend was once a prospect. Peace.